Hello everyone. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use a simple board like the ESP8266 thing from SparkFun to interface with If This Then That so that you can make your own custom control recipes for devices that already exist and are supported on If This Then That like a Logitech Harmony remote. Let's get started. If you're already familiar with what if this then that is, you might want to kind of skip ahead to where I start actually doing some programming and whatnot on the SP8266. If you're not familiar with what if this then that is, it's basically a really simple and free service that allows you to link up home automation and IoT devices to gain a little bit of extra features from them. So here's an example. Let's say you have an IoT doorbell. I don't know if those actually exist, but you have a doorbell that's connected up to your Wi-Fi network and has a little app and all that cool stuff. And then you also have um, some lights in your house. Let's say the Philips Hue, you know, little color changing lights that you can control with the app. Well, most likely the app for those lights isn't going to have an option to read your doorbell and react based on that. So if both of these devices are supported with if this then that, you can create your own link or recipe and they're based on triggers and events. So the trigger is your if and the event is your then. So let's say we set up a simple trigger that if the doorbell is pressed, then the lights turn red. And so without any complex programming, basically just kind of drag and drop, you can create this really simple recipe that when the doorbell is pressed, the lights turn red. So it's really as simple as that. However, there's two big downsides to that. Your device has to be supported in the database and the trigger and the event is largely dictated by the manufacturer. So if those events aren't in there, you're kind of out of luck. For instance, the Harmony remote is listed in there, but unfortunately they only have the ability to start an activity and end an activity. You can't actually do volume or any other controls on this. You can only start or stop an activity. And Logitech, if you're watching this, that's silly. Add some more functionality to this. Let me control volume and other things, maybe. So what I want to do is create a link between two devices that don't really exist in there. For instance, my Sono system. So what I want to do is have a button that basically starts playing my audio system. So I'm using an ESP8266 from SparkFun Electronics. There's a lot of um, kind of various clones on this device. They have a webhooks platform, which actually allows you to create your own triggers or create your own events, but I'm going to be creating my own trigger. So then I create a custom trigger and then that triggers a pre-existing event, which is to start an activity on the remote. So um, let's look a little bit more on how to set up the ESP8266 to create a custom event. The very first thing that we want to do is set up our ESP8266 so we can program it in the Arduino IDE environment. So I'm just going to the tutorial for the ESP8266 thing on SparkFun's website and they have a nice little overview of um, kind of everything you need to know and you're just going to want to go ahead and go straight down to setting up Arduino. Now I'm just basically following the directions here so if you read through this you should have you know no problem doing this on your own. But basically we're copying this um, definitions file over to Arduino. We're going to go into the preferences and then we're going to load it here in the board managers and then go hit, hit OK. And then under the boards over here, we go to the boards manager and then we should be able to search for ESP8266. There it is. And then we're going to go ahead and install all these definition files. And what this does is it installs all the libraries that we need to use and also installs all the board definitions and everything needed so that we can program the 8266 in the Arduino environment. Okay, so now we have all these boards installed. So I'm going to close this out. And if you look down at our boards over here, you can see that all the ESPs are available to us. So not only can we do the SparkFun thing dev, we can also do like the Adafruit huzzah, whatever huzzah is, and then, you know, generic modules and things like that. So we can just go ahead and select that. And then you get your typical settings, you know, like what COM port it's on, all that good stuff. So now we're ready to start loading the code over. For the code, I found this really great GitHub repository called ESP8266 button, which does pretty much exactly what I want is it turns the 8266 into a button, IoT button for if this, then that. 
and it kind of has a lot of um, you know this kind of build tutorial and whatnot on it. What we're interested in here is the IoT button thing.ino. If you're not using the actual thing from SparkFun, you can also choose the other one. So we're just going to go ahead and click on this. And by the way, all of these um, links are in the description to this video, so you don't have to go searching for them. And we're just going to go ahead and select um, all of this delicious code that someone spent so much time and effort writing. We're going to copy that and just simply paste it into a new sketch here. And then you're going to have to save this as something new. So ESP8266 button. And then let's go ahead and try and compile it. And you shouldn't have any compiling errors. I think I did the very first time I tried this. Um, I was missing some of these libraries because I did things wrong. But all of these libraries are actually included when you do the um, board definition thing that we did in the previous step. So um, we're just going to go ahead and let this compile. It should be finished here soon. And everything looks good. Now, um, a couple things to note here. Um, IP address. This is going to be the IP address when the device goes into access point mode. We'll get into that in the next step, but you don't have to program your SSID or any of the wireless settings. This actually has a really cool access point mode that we can set it up remotely like that. So we'll do this in the next step. And then i um, got a couple other little things down here. Here is all the if this then that. This we will set up after we set up the Wi-Fi, um, but this is going to be your if this then that maker key and then your custom event that you specify. And if you're going to be using a notification, this would be your notification event. Um, so yeah, the next step is to go ahead and load this on the board. I don't want to load this code on my board because I've already modified it, but you would just um, select your port, make sure you have the right device selected, and then go ahead and upload this code. When you get the code loaded onto your board, you're going to want to set up the Wi-Fi. So we're just going to plug it into some power connect it on and the blue light's going to turn on and this indicates that it's in like an access point mode. So turn on a phone or something like that um, that we can access the Wi-Fi. You'll notice an ESP8266 IoT button setup will show up as an available network. We're going to connect to this and it'll take a couple seconds and now we're going to be connected and then we're just going to switch over to a browser and we're going to connect to 192.168.11. So what's happening here is this actually saves your Wi-Fi settings in the EEPROM, so it stores it. You only have to do this once, but when we connect to it for the first time, it actually sets up as an access point, and then we connect to it by this IP, and then we can go into the Wi-Fi settings here and select our network. Um, I am, of course, FBI van. I'm going to type in my password here. And then I'm going to hit submit off camera so you guys can't even see how long my password is. And then when I do that, it says Wi-Fi setup complete. So now we never need to do this again. And you see the light went off. This is now connected into my own Wi-Fi network. So that's pretty slick and really cool. The next step is to get our key as well as set our event. Now I realize I should have probably done this earlier in the video, but I just didn't think about it with putting the video together, but you can do this pretty much at any time. So um, we need to get our key. So we're gonna go to our browser, go to maker.ifthisthenthat.com. You're gonna need to create account and all that stuff, but once you log in to the webhooks, you'll see all this. Go into the settings, and that is where you find your unique key. Mine is right here. You can't see it because I've removed it because I don't want you using my key. The thing to note is you do not need to copy this whole URL, just the key that's at the end. So we're gonna copy this piece that's at the end and replace it with the text here, just inside the um, quotation marks like that. So make your own key, copy that, put it over there. The next step is to create the event. Now the event can be whatever you want. You're creating this event, sending it to if this then that, and then they are taking that and acting on it. So we could just put something like uh, subscribe to my channel. Let's just put that in there. We're gonna copy that. Now we need to make an event or you know make this whole thing. So we're gonna click on applets. We're gonna create a new applet. So our if condition is going to be, let me see, yeah, if this. So we're gonna do web, so for web hooks, and then receive a web request. 
and the web request is going to be subscribe to my channel. That is our trigger. You can make this trigger whatever you want as long as it matches up with what's in your code here. And then once we create that trigger, the that can be whatever you want. You can do Twitter, you can do SMS, email, anything you want. So that is how you link those two together so that when this device, um, you press a button, it sends this event to if this then that, this is the action that will be created. So I'm gonna go back and load my code which has uh, my key, my event, and I'll show you how it works in real life. So let's test everything out. I've got my remote control here. I have an event set up that when I touch this pin, which is pin zero to ground, it will send the command to do the uh, music activity. And you might be able to see from the remote, there's no current activities right now. Everything is off. So if I go ahead and touch this ground pin, simulates a button press, you can see the light come on. And hopefully within a few seconds, it's a little laggy sometimes, you should see the event change on the remote. And there it goes. So now it has started the music command and music should be flowing in my living room. So it's pretty cool. And I can go ahead and hit off and this will theoretically power everything off. And then if we touch this again, boop, sends another little command. If we watch the remote, the music command is selected. So it's pretty simple as that. The last thing I want to do is integrate this in with um, my little Sonos control box so I can make this a one complete package that does everything that I need. This is my stereo control interface. I built this um, a few months back and it's worked out really well, but it does have one issue. The way this works is it actually reads the audio signal coming out of the Sonos Zone player, determines if music is either being played or not being played, and then sending the appropriate RS-232 commands to the rest of the system to turn on the appropriate um, components and obviously start playing music. The problem with this is it doesn't talk to the remote control at all, so unfortunately the remote has no idea what's going on. The system can turn on and start working, but as soon as you grab the remote to change the volume, volume or change tracks or anything else, the remote has no idea what is happening. It just thinks everything's off. So that is kind of the impetus for this project. So what I've done is I've modified this with some headers inside. So now I can actually plug in this and um, add the functionality that I made in this video. So what will actually happen is it will read the audio signal still the same old way and it will determine is music being played yes or no. That is being determined by the sound detector and the Prominion here. If music is being played, it actually simulates a button press with this little opto isolator. An opto isolator is a really simple device for basically simulating button presses. If you do a um, pin high on the um, Arduino, it goes into one side of the opto isolator and then the other two sides basically, um, I guess just act as a closed pin so that I can just simulate a button being pressed on this. So when it detects that music is being played, it does a button press on here and you saw what happens. So that actually sends all the commands to the remote control and then it does the rest. So right now I have the RS-232 effectively disabled, but I'm gonna use that for something else later. And I do realize I could have probably done all of this in software, but I'm not a software guy. This was probably the easier way of doing it for me. Um, so even though there's a little bit of hardware redundancy in here, I'm perfectly okay with that. So there you have it, an overly complex amalgamation of hardware and software to do a seemingly trivial thing. Welcome to the world of home automation and IoT. But hopefully this video gives you a little bit better idea of how to use the 8266 
in with the if this then that tool chain. It actually can be surprisingly useful and I'm probably going to do you know some other projects based around it. There's a couple things I want to do out in the workshop for like automation but it's really cool. There's a lot of great devices coming out that are connected with if this then that but if you don't really have the trigger that you want or the um, you know other side of it that you want it is kind of nice that something like this exists at the price point that you can just you know kind of create your own little um, recipe that goes together. So hopefully you got something out of this video. Uh, if you like my videos, please subscribe to my channel and also check out my Patreon account where you can not only support my channel, but you can also see the other channels that I support. Thanks for watching.